In this lecture, I have a few miscellaneous things I want to talk about. I've got some bad news for you, but then we're going to do a couple of interesting things too. Previously, we've seen two types of numeric variables, integers and doubles. And we've also talked about string variable. And the string allows us to manipulate text. Now, uh, I do have some bad news for you, and that is that the string variable is not the native string representation in C++. What does that mean? Well, when C++ was a, a new language, the string class hadn't yet been created and used a different mechanism for manipulating character strings, something called character arrays. And we haven't talked about arrays yet. That's coming up. Here's an example of a declaration of a character array. Now, why is this important or why is this something that you have to know about? Well, in C++, many of the commands that take a piece of text as a parameter or an argument expect you to express that text as a character array and not a string. So the language isn't really compatible with itself. One of the most important commands that you will have to use with strings then is this one. C underscore str. I wanted to tell you about it now so you'd have a heads up so you could you know, know this was coming. What this does when you use the C underscore str, which stands for C string, command on a string, such as name, it returns an equivalent string expressed as a character array in the old original style of representing text in C++. And the reason you would do this is so that you can use the, your nicer to use string variables with other commands that expect only character arrays. To create a copy as a char array. All right, let's do something a little bit more interesting and let's talk about nesting and connecting uh, values. Now we can do this in a variety of different ways. And so here's a connected equation. Now the computer doesn't actually simultaneously add these values together. In fact, the computer can only add two values at once. So in this particular case, it would add four plus five together to get nine, and then add nine plus six in a second operation. Now this also applies to functions. We've seen a few in the math library. Let's take a look at some examples. So let's pound include math and uh, two math functions that we've talked about previously are pow um, to calculate exponents and square root let's combine them and let's get the power of something squared and what is it that we want to square let's square the square root of 9.0 so this is called nesting. And here, notice I've put the call to one of our mathematical functions inside the call to another one. So when the computer comes to evaluate this, it says re result equals pow. It sees, oh, I need to square this. But before it can square it, it has to figure out what it is. So this is going to go and find what the square root of 9 is, calculate it, and then return that value here. So this call to this mathematical function will take on that value. And so whatever value then comes here is then passed to the POW function, which is then squared. So run this program and, and see what value we get. We'll go ahead and compile this. I called this lecture 4x. Oh, haha. <laughs> have to 
comment that line out. I use the variable count again in my example. And oh yes, and now let's run the program. And notice here I get back my original nine. Let's put in a different value here, eight, and save, compile, and run, and notice I get eight. 8.5. Let's do a slightly more useful numeric example, Pythagorean theorem, which you might remember from trigonometry is something like this. So if we have a particular angle and we calculate the sine of that angle and then square the result, and take the cosine of that angle and square the result, we're supposed to get one. All right, so let's implement that. Here I've got this result variable. Why don't we use that? Here I'll copy and paste that line. And, oh, we're gonna need an angle. All right, let's add a double variable. I'll call this angle A. pick some value, it doesn't, doesn't matter, because um, it should work for, for any angle. And our result, we're going to want to square, and what do we want to square? The sine, the, in the uh, math library, the trigonometric functions are there as well. So here we're going to calculate the sine of angle A. And we want to square that plus pow of the cosine of angle A and square that. All right, now Pythagoras was right. <laughs> we should get a one here. Let's compile the program and run N. And there, notice our one as a result of that equation. So that works. Now, if you do some further experiments with uh, doubles and various math calculations, one thing you may notice is that occasionally the value that you get is be slightly off the value that you expected. Now, in each of these examples I did, notice I got exactly the value I was expecting. But it is possible for you to get a value that's a little bit different. And that's because uh, doubles in the computer uh, are only approximations. And so far we've seen that the approximation is very good, but um, sometimes you'll get a numeric result that's a little bit off what you expected. That's a topic that we'll talk a little bit more about later in the semester and then on into um, subsequent uh, classes. We'll talk more about why that is and um, things you can do about that. But for now we notice it's looking pretty good. Let me show you one more example of nesting functions. And since we've done some numeric examples, let's do a string example. And let's say that I've got some character string, and what I would like to do is get the last character in that character string. Let me show you how we can do that. First, maybe I should make a sample character string. Remember that the characters in a string are numbered starting at zero. H E L L O. So let's say I have the string hello. That's one, two, three, four, five characters in length. So the length is five. And the positions of the characters would be zero, one, two, three, and four. So in a string of length n, the last character would be in the n minus one position. So I have to make sure to adjust for that. Okay, well how can I get the last character of a string? Well previously we talked about the substring command and we talked about the length command and we can use those together. So here I already have a string variable. Let's use that. And here I'll say string last letter equals name dot substring 
And now we put a position, but I want to calculate a position based on the length. So here I'll say name dot length minus one. Since we're starting at the last position, there'll only be that one character. So once again, working our way kind of from the inside out, in order for it to take a substring, has to calculate this first. So it takes a look at the string, figures out what its length is, gets five, subtracts one, four, and then would give us the character in position four. In this case, that should be a lowercase e. All right, let's go ahead and compile and run the program, and there you see a letter E. All right, nothing wrong with being a little self-affirming, and we run the program again, and this time I get, once again, the last character, an exclamation point. Let's add a space there. And notice, I look here, how do I know that I got a space character there? There's no easy way to see that. Let me show you one tip for working with character strings that will be useful, especially when you're getting started and kind of uh, doing some of your first string manipulations. And that is, when you're working with strings and you want to kind of see exactly what you're getting, I like to do this trick. Print out a character on either side of the string, such as an asterisk. And now when I compile and run the program, notice now I can kind of clearly see that there's a space in between there. And I'll go ahead and take the space out, and I can see the exclamation point. So putting the character on either side can sometimes make it easier for you to see exactly uh, what results you're getting. All right. That's it for Lecture 4X. Thank you.